Hello, it's good to have you with us at Memorial Park Baptist Church as we hear the Word of God today, and it's great to be a part of what God wants to do in our lives. Let us join our hearts in a moment of prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much that we can come before you today. We thank you that we can hear from your Word, and we just praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 10. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. This boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about the visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know, only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body, but I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things that no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses, if I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from being proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the reading of God's Word. How many of you believe that God never gives you more than you can handle? How many of you feel that way today? I want to suggest to you today that that statement that God never gives us more than we can handle is not true. In fact, I think what often happens when we hear that, when a person is overwhelmed by their troubles and difficulties, they somehow think either God has failed them or they feel like their faith is not strong enough. I do believe there are times in life that God does give us more than we can handle. But the question today is how do we deal with that? How do we come to grips with that? And I want to suggest from this passage that I read to you that there are some things that I think may be helpful for us when we're going through trials and difficulties. Now before I do that, I want to give you a little bit of the historical context of this text. There were those in the Corinthian church that seriously questioned Paul's credentials as an apostle. There were false teachers in the church that were suggesting that Paul was unimpressive. In chapter 10, verse 9, uh, these accusers commented that Paul writes strong letters, but in person, he was kind of a wuss or a wimp. Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing that. But you have to understand that what was happening was that his authority as an apostle was being questioned because some of these other false teachers were taking pride that they had had a number of supernatural experiences, they had had a number of visions, they had had a number of encounters supernaturally, and here was Paul, unimpressive very common in many ways. And so in order to defend his authority, Paul had to address that to the Corinthian church. Now in verses one through four, he talks about the fact that very reluctantly, 
He talks about this vision he had. And he talks about this experience he had had 14 years ago. Now, in the original text, he actually talks about this in the third person. He, he almost acts like somebody else had the vision. But as chapter, uh, verse 7 says, that it was clear that he was talking about himself. And that's why in that translation I read to you, it really talks about his vision, his own vision. And Paul is very reluctant to share because his concern was to share about Jesus, not about himself. And so, but for the matter of argument, because they were questioning his authority, Paul has this vision. And I'll just read verses 1 to 4 for you again. He says, this boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about the visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in body or out of body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in body or out of body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things that no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will only boast about my weakness. You see, Paul, very reluctantly, because he's trying to defend his authority as apostle, tells a story about himself. Now, this vision was quite spectacular. He talks about being caught up in the third heaven. And, and according to many scholars, uh, the third heaven was that which is beyond anything that we can imagine. The first heaven, by the way, is... Uh, the clouds and the atmosphere as we look up in the sky. The second heaven is outer space and the stars and the moon and the sun. The third heaven, though, was the supernatural realm, being in the very presence of Jesus Christ himself. And Paul talked about in this vision, and he didn't even know whether it was in body or out of body, or whether it was a dream or whatever it was. It was so powerful that he was caught up into the third heaven beyond human reasoning or thought. It was equated with the term paradise. And interesting, the word paradise was an old Persian word which meant a walled-in garden or a park, a place of beauty, a place of peace. And Paul was so caught up in that, it had such an impact on him and his walk with Jesus. But he did not want to use that as a point of Boasting, he was only doing it to defend his role as an apostle because these other false teachers were bragging all the time. Oh, we have visions left and we have visions right and have all kinds of things happening supernaturally. And then here's Paul. And so Paul very reluctantly shares about his experience in order to show that he was qualified to be a man of God preaching the gospel as an apostle. But Paul very quickly, though, makes a very important statement, though. In verse 5, he says, That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only in my weaknesses. Verse 6 says, If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so, because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it, because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. You see, for him, the important thing was Jesus. The important thing for him was his boast would be in the Lord and not in his personal experiences. But if he's going to boast about anything, it's going to be in his weakness and how God sustained him through his weakness. And that really then leads us to the next point that he makes in verses 7 and 8. And listen to this. And it says, Even though I have received such wonderful revelations, to keep me from being proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me, and to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. What we see here is that it was in his weakness that God wanted to use him. Not in his revelations, not in his supernatural experiences, not in his ability to heal people or do all kinds of wonderful things, but it was in his weakness that God wanted to use him. And I believe there are times that God will use us the most 
when we are at our lowest. There are times when, when it is more than we can handle. There are times when it's more than we can possibly imagine that we can face. When we're at wit's end and we're at the bottom point of our lives. And Paul recognized that. It was through his weakness that God gave him the authority. God gave him the direction that he needed to have to share the good news of Jesus. And the question I have for us today is what are the lessons that God wants to teach us when, when it's more than we can handle? What can we learn from this? I think there are several things in this text that I think will be helpful as we look at verses 7 through 10. First of all, I want us to talk about the fact that here, and I already mentioned this, that we have what is called a persistent problem for Paul. Verse 7 talks about, so to keep me from being proud, and by the way, he, he mentions this twice in the verse, to keep me from being proud. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from being proud. Again, he repeats that. Now, I want to make a comment about this thorn in the flesh. I believe that that is a very weak translation because the original Greek word for thorn means a tent stake or a large stake. It's not some little thorn that you get on your finger when you, you have a rose bush thorn get in your finger. It is a stake being driven into your very being. And whatever with this thorn was, it was very painful for Paul. It was persistent. It continued on. Now, there's been all kinds of suggestions of what this thorn was. And by the way, the text really doesn't say, but here are some of the theories that people have had about what this thorn was. One church leader in the early church thought it was an, an ongoing earache or a headache, maybe like a migraine, I don't know. Another church leader thought it was those who were opposed to Paul, the, the people who didn't like Paul, they were his thorns in the flesh. There were some who thought that this thorn in the flesh was some kind of temptation that Paul had. Maybe he struggled with lust. And, and that was usually a, a view that was seen much later in the church, particularly during the medieval times. There were others who thought he had epilepsy. And that was some of the theories. Another rather strong possibility, he may have had some kind of eye problem. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15, he talks about having an illness and how he knows that because of the generosity of the Galatians, they would give his very eyes to him. So maybe it was an eye problem. Also in Galatians chapter 6, verse 11, in the same letter, he talks about how he's writing this letter in large letters. So maybe he had an eye problem. Still others thought maybe he had malaria. And, it, and it, malaria was described as a disease that felt like a red-hot bar being thrust into the forehead, which would fit with the stake image. Certain types of malaria also could have an impact on the eyesight as well. The reality is, though, that the text does not say exactly what this thorn in the flesh was. I think the important thing was, whatever it was, it was a messenger from Satan that tormented Paul. That word torment means it literally punched him black and blue. It was an ongoing pain. It was an ongoing situation that Paul could not bear. It was beyond what he could handle. And that's why in verse 8, he says, in verse 9 actually, he says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. I asked the Lord, verse 8, I asked him to take it away three times. It was ongoing. He asked it to be removed. And really the answer that God had, and that's really the second point I want to make, God promised him his grace. God's answer was, my grace 
is sufficient for you. An important truth for us to learn is, I believe that God does give us more than we can handle in order to totally depend on the sufficiency of Jesus Christ. Our dependency is not on how well we handle the situation, but how God alone strengthens us through the difficulty by the sufficiency of his grace. When we are at wit's end and we cannot handle life and we are just saying, Lord, there is no, nothing I can do but to lean totally on you. That is the point that we see the sufficiency of Jesus alone. Yes, God does give us more than we can handle. And here's an example. Paul asked time and time again, God, take it away. Take it away. And the Lord's answer was, my grace is sufficient. It's all you need. Last week, Alicia talked about being the potter's clay. Remember talking about our Lord as the potter and we are the clay and how we shaped us and how the Lord shapes us. And she did a wonderful job, I thought, of really kind of explaining that. But the one thing that, that I want to kind of pick up on that, when that whole process of shaping the pottery, you know, you know how they shape the pottery and you, and, you, and you spin it and all that stuff, the last thing they do is they, they put it under the fire. You know, after it's been shaped, in order to harden it, in order to strengthen it, they give it strength so that it's useful, they put it under the fire. Sometimes they do it a couple of times. I believe that's what this text is talking about today. You know, we're like the, 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 the clay pots and, and the Lord is shaping us, but in order to be all that God wants us to be, in order to be people who truly depend on the Lord and to understand his sufficiency, oftentimes he will put us through the fire. Now, I don't like being put on the fire. Fire is hot. It hurts. It's painful. And yet, I think we need to understand, we need to get over this myth that God never gives us more than we can handle. It's a myth. It's not true. Sometimes he does, but when he puts us in that place, we understand more deeply the total sufficiency of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. And so when we are hurting, when things are difficult, when we're at wit's end, and all we have left is Jesus, we come to the realization that he is all that we need. On a personal note, let me just say something. During the last six months, we've been dealing with this pandemic. And to be honest with you, I'm tired of it. I can't tell you the number of times I have said to God, please end this nightmare. I want to be able to do stuff that I used to be able to do. I, I, I want to go and have a hot dog at a ball game. Now, that's no big deal. I understand that. But there are so many things you just feel like you're kind of in this box. And then, of course, we've had all the problems with what's happening in our cities, the political unrest, all the situation, the fires out west. You know, the, the hurricanes down south, it seems pretty overwhelming sometimes. And I have to admit, emotionally some days I feel like I just had it. I'm tired of it. But maybe the lesson, maybe what we need to be understanding is this. That through these very difficult times that we are in, both personally and as a nation, as a world really, maybe there is something to be said about the sufficiency of Jesus Christ. How much do we trust God through these hard times that his grace is sufficient for us? Whether it's through a pandemic, whether it's through unrest, whether it's through political upheaval, whether it's through hurricanes or whatever, how much do we trust in the sufficiency of Jesus? That's really the challenge for myself today. I'm speaking to myself on this because it's difficult. And sometimes it feels like it's more than I can possibly handle. The truth is, it is. That's why we need God's grace and God's mercy and God's comfort every single day. 
This really leads me then to my last point I want to make today from this text. Not only, not only do we see a persistent problem that's identified, this thorn in the flesh, not only do we see the promise of God as he promise, promises Paul his, the sufficiency of his grace, but thirdly, we see Paul living a pleasure and enjoyment of life even in the midst of pain. Listen to verse 10 for me, if you will. Listen to this. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and, and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He takes pleasure in this. You know, pleasure in weaknesses and in insults. And by the way, that word insult is... is uh, People will go over and above to insult him. They mean to go beyond just insult. It's insult upon insult. In uh, hardships, again, the Greek word there really means uh, having, having uh, your arm twisted to the point where it hurts. That's really the implications of that word. Or persecutions or troubles. The word troubles is an interesting word too in, in the original language in that it's, it's uh, feeling like your space or territory is being invaded and you're being squeezed in on all sides. Paul takes pleasure in that. Why? Because he recognizes the sufficiency of Jesus Christ, even at his weakest moment. And he delights in that. Yes, God does give us more than we can handle. But he also is all sufficient to help us through every situation, whether good or bad. And that we can know of his healing love. In fact, we can come to the point, I believe, in our lives where we take delight that even in the midst of the hardship and the difficulties and the struggles, we can take delight that our Jesus, that our Jesus, is sufficient for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. It has so much to say to us today. And God, we know that we feel like at times we're just overwhelmed. Maybe some of us today are going through personal pain, maybe illnesses, whether it's cancer or whether it's, whether it's other, some other disease. Some of us today, Lord, maybe are experiencing family conflict and difficulties, or maybe the situation at work is very iffy right now. We're all dealing with, of course, with the pandemic and dealing with the political situation and social situation in our land. And God, we feel overwhelmed. But God, help us to understand once again the sufficiency of the grace of God. As Romans 8 says, nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Not even tribulation or hardship or toil will separate us from your love. So God, give us the strength, give us the courage, and give us the peace to endure whatever comes our way. In the name of Christ, amen.